I want to show you how to tap in the power of MTV Cribs to land more high ticket sales with email. No messing around. What are you going to get out of this video? Why should you invest the next five minutes or so? Look, I'm going to show you how you can make more sales without relying on urgency, scarcity, or discount. We're going to talk about the one principle that every single one person's business uses so that people actually really look forward to your content. And I'm also going to show you some examples that I've used to help my clients generate over $15 million in sales using emails just like this. And if at any point you found some value along the way in this video, make sure you give this video the thumbs up. Right, so what we're gonna talk about today is super interesting because this is the backbone of everything that I do with my clients and it's a reason why I don't think templates work that well. Now, if everyone was able to just get a template from say some lead magnet, some $49 thing, why isn't everyone making it rain with email? Well, it's simple. They're not really tapping into this one principle that I use all the time with clients and it just works super well. So a bit of a backstory, right? There's, well, here's, here's a big reveal. They're not using enough fascination. So this guy on the left here, his name's Dan Kennedy. I would say he's like godfather in marketing. He, he knows a lot of stuff. I've gone through one of his courses, which is called uh, Influential Writing. And the very first principle of influential writing is fascination. And when you think about fascination, it's the reason why we all want to know the lives of the celebrities like MTV Cribs. We want to know what's going on with that YouTuber. We want to know the behind the scenes of whoever celebrity or influencer or some person you like. I first learned this from reading some daily emails from Ben Settle. Um, he's, he's got some really good fascination based emails slowly letting you into his life as well. Then you can see from sort of like the Russell Brunson side of things where he talks about the Seinfeld and what goes on to your day and then relating that story back to your everyday life. But this is how we go a step further, okay? So instead of just going like things that people are interested in, this is what Jim Rohn says that fascination is. It's like fascination is one step beyond interest. Interested people wanna know if it works. Fascinated people wanna know how it works. So how do you engineer this into your email so that people know, like, and trust you faster, they look forward to your content, they wanna hand you more money? Uh, it's a good point. So here's how we're gonna do it quickly, right? So um, yeah, there's some MTV stuff going on and here's some other examples of fascination. Why I'm leaving Bali, my last day leaving, living in Bali, 251,000 views. She only has 228,000 subscribers. Uh, I bet there's a lot of fascination involved in What's it really like to be digital nomad inside of Bali? And like this photo just screams behind the scenes, fascination, like what's going on. Um, this other thing, one year as digital nomads, nomads what we've learned, uh, great example of fascination. Now, how do you actually use this for emails? So here's what I've done with a client, right? I saw this photo. Uh, one of my clients was building a 100K studio to build content, which is nuts. And the reason why he built this studio was because fascination. He wanted to look professional. He wanted to look like a TV character. That was his thing behind it. So main thing, how do we create fascination, right? A lot, the key thing is uh, relatability. So. Um, sometimes the relatability doesn't have to be the thing you're actually doing, but it could be a behavior, right? So guilty pleasure hobbies. This is one of my favorite ways to create fascination. So I've had clients who've done fine dining at every single Michelin star restaurant in San Francisco, um, crazy expensive guitars, really nice holidays, $100,000 content studios, uh, magic trick coaching where they went back to their, uh, the shop that they were really interested in as a kid and then they got the owner of the store to basically coach them so then that they could relive their child fantasy of finally being able to buy the magic trick and perform in front of people. So this is my fascination, right? These real curious things and guilty pleasure hobbies are one of those pieces of fascination. Um, another one is... Family, okay? So this has less to do with <laughs> spending extravagantly, um, how you met your partner. What did you do to sell them on your partner? So what, how, did you, how did you like approach them? I've talked about this all the time, like especially with clients who sell, it's like, how did you sell the most important person in your life? What did you do? What was the story? What did you mess up? 
um, the parallels between dating and business, um, and what I wrote here. You get to know more what you don't like more than what you actually do like. Um, yes. And uh, I love using the example of, of dating for that. Cool. Um, rock bottom story. So this is fascination as well. The day that changed your life and how things turned around, I always pull this out of clients. So for instance, um, I think after a lot of digging for this client here, Troy, uh, he was about 28 years old, rent was due, he had about 3K in his bank, he blew it all the last six months, he was in a bit of a depressive state. Um, he was a salesman though, and he rent was due, like I said, and then he had a phone call from like a hairdressing salon rep, and they said to him, come in, we've got a $1,500 check for you um, from one of your points of service that you just sold. And that is when he realized that sales was the thing that was gonna get him out of any problem. And that's when he knew that sales was basically the one skill you have to learn in order to save yourself, right? To get yourself out of any sticky situation. I'll go a bit deeper than that, but I love using rock bottom stories um, as a point of fascination with clients. One of the things I love doing with clients, and I think you should probably consider doing as well, is always taking photos, documenting the process, I took this photo without even thinking I was documenting. I was just like, wow, look how ghetto this looks. Uh, this is in my ex-girlfriend's um, shed and you can see there's a little tiny, um, there's a little tiny, uh, can you see this? It's like, there's a tiny, tiny little um, vision board um, and all of this came true as well, which is really damn cool. But the point I'm trying to make is that if you're able to document the process, um, like so important to take photos, take videos, because this is all photo for later. And it's not just like, let me write you this email. Like, you can actually show and tell at the same time, which adds to the fascination factor. Fascination factor, I'm really gonna keep that. Okay, so what does this look like inside of an email and how do you actually get more sales? This is the structure how I would write for clients. Okay. So first you want to find a point of tension um, in the middle of the story. Here are some examples we might use. Rent was due and I had less than $2,000 to my name. Um, I made over 150K closing clients, but standing across the room was an absolutely stunning woman. I could barely string together a sentence. The bill came to $700 for dinner and I loved paying for it. We're in the middle of the story. We're not building it up. It's an email. You have to get straight into it because uh, you'll just lose interest. So this is how we do it. Then you got the build up, okay? I can't, I can't create this for you, but I can give you a few lines which might help with the build up. Um, why should they invest in your email? Exactly, so I wanna quickly explain how um, blank will help you blank. I wanna quickly explain how being broke will help you be the greatest salesman of all time. I wanna help you explain how being miserable, fat, and grumpy every single day revealed to me the secret for sleeping really well and getting you know 100 perfect scores on my work band. This is a great template to use. Stick with me, I'll explain how it connects to the thing they want in just a moment. I promise there's a payoff, especially if you want to thing they want. So I'm actually not revealing everything. These are just my little go-to lines I love using all the time with clients. Okay. Then we built up discovery, we built it up. Uh, then there's the discovery. So you wanna tell the story and give a payoff and you bridge to your premise. So I'm gonna give you some lines you can use. Uh, let's zoom in so you can read this a bit better. Okay, um, which, so this is, this is the kind of like bridge from Russell Brunson, which is kind of like the thing you wanna sell. It's the same thing, right? So we've told a story, let's just say it was about me being at rock bottom of in my girlfriend's ex, my ex-girlfriend's, um, it's like, uh, let's just say, rent was due and I had $500 to my name. Um, something had to happen. And then tell the story about that. Um, now, being broke and living on the line is kinda like, is kinda like uh, being broke and living on the line is kind of like that feeling before you get in a sales call and you're kind of desperate. It's the same thing, right? We don't want to be, 
when you're in that desperate energy, you know, nothing really seems to come your way. But you just repel abundance. See what I'm saying? Like that was just a really off the top of my head. Okay, uh, here's another exam example of where you bridge to your premise. It's something I, um, now that I've bring back to the story, what does this have to do with you? Um, now that I've, uh, okay, now that I've explained, uh, now that, I've, now that I've explained how living on the line and being broke can be a great salesman, it helps you be a great salesman, what does this have to do with you? And this is where you go to your pitch. So you tease the what, and you make clicking the link scratch the itch of the how. So let, let me run you through an example, okay. So here's an example of the bridge, the lesson I'm making here. Sometimes the best way to get better at sales isn't to get better at sales, stick with me. It's getting rid of any desperation reeking from your breath. The best way to have unshakable confidence, one recurring revenue, 100%. When you know your money hits your bank account every month, it changes how you show up to sales calls. You're naturally less fearful and more unafraid to say no to soul sucking clients. Uh, the good news is we can help you build that unshakable conviction with recurring revenue. So what's the cheat code? Well, if you're an agency that's doing at least 5K a month, you've got dogged determination to get things done and you don't lay down to a challenge easily, I guarantee you'll close eight recurring revenue in 30 days or work for free every day. I call it the gate place model, blah, blah, blah. Curious to know, um, curious to learn more. Without the pitch, fill out this short application and speak with our team for 15 minutes here. Um, so in this story here, I didn't want to, spend it too long, but this was the rock bottom story, how uh, this client had three, about 3,000 bucks for his name, uh, rent was due, and um, yeah, didn't have a lot of money. Then this is the transition to the premise, okay? Um, the fascination part, let's just go back over it just one more time. So people are super interested in fascination, it's one thing to talk about interests, another to really let them into your world. The three categories that I like to use with clients are guilty, guilty pleasure hobbies, uh, family, uh, relationships, uh, rock bottom story, hobbies, interests, movies, books you read, um, things that make you weird and stand out. That's what I like to think about. Things that make you weird and stand out. That's the fascination factor. So if you found a lot of value along the way with this video, make sure you give the video the thumbs up. Hit subscribe, ask me a question about the fascination factor, how you can use it with email. This is a sort of, I'm trying to make these videos relatively short and action packed. Don't make this like a long lecture. So if you found more value out of this, uh, you're gonna see a playlist right over here. It's gonna have a bunch more videos on helping you make more money with email.